Good morning and thank you for tuning in to today's pre-market poll scan. The time right now is 7.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today is Tuesday, April the 11th, 2017. Jumping right into the meat of things, looking at the overnight markets. Well, bonds right now are quiet. We're holding at 151.29, just a tad bit shy from the 152 mark. So bonds have remained strong after the last rate hike. Looking at the Dow, it's off 8 points at 20,559. The NASDAQ 100 right now is down 3 and a quarter at 5419. And the S&P 500 is down 1 and 3 quarters at 23.50 and 3 quarters. Crude oil, interesting, at $53 even. It's off 75 cents. And I'm sorry, 7 .5 cents, not 75 cents. 7 .5 cents, I apologize. Uh, still waking up. Uh, let's see here. Moving along, we got yesterday the dollar settled just under 101 so it's hanging in there that uh, par seems to be the new uh, support base for the dollar looking at the euro it's up 16 pips at 106.46 the pound up nine pips at 124.48 and the aussie is up five pips at 74.96 gold strong up five dollars and ten cents at 12.59 still stuck in that range folks overnight was 1261 high, 1254 70 low. So we're still oscillating between you know the 12, we'll call it we'll call it 1255 ish to 1271 ish. That's where we are. All right, so we're still stuck in this range. We've expanded the top side of the range, but nevertheless, we're still in a trading range in gold, silver. Up about a nickel at 1792. Uh, and natural gas holding holding strong. Uh, above that 320 base, it's right now at 326. So natural gas is really hanging in there. I like that. Alright, so where do we go from here? What does what is it that we are not seeing behind the scenes? All right. That's the question. All right. What is it that's going on that we may not be privy to with the naked eye? That's always the question I like to ask because you never know what's really going on. If you just look at a chart, sometimes you can get it. Sometimes you can't. So for the most part, we're going to do it backwards today. We're going to look at the crash alerts first, and then we'll move on from there. All right. The U.S. dollar index has a crash alert. So does gold. So does silver. I don't think there's, those are going to play out necessarily today. and <clears throat> But it's something we can't ignore deep within the algo set because it's picking this up. It's picking up some type of selling activity. That is going on behind the scenes. However, the trend for the gold and the silver still remains uh, bullish. All right, and this is on the monthly time frame. And for gold, we have momentum locked in on our side. Silver has lost its bullish momentum, but it's still within its its bullish complexion on the chart. It's also uh, in a bullish Kumo cloud scenario right now, speaking of silver. Gold, however, is not. All right, so that's a good thing uh, for you gold bugs out there. Please take a note, though, at today's support because it's going to be key. You don't want to see that trigger today. <coughs> Excuse me. A trigger of that support would actually get you out of longs and tell you that it's time to get along the paper all right same thing with silver got to take a note of where silver support is today if we take that out again 
it's time to get along the paper. Advanced Micro Devices. That one is another one to watch. It does have a crash alert in it. Uh, we also have one in GDX and GDXJ. No surprise there. GDX, however, is a slightly different makeup than GDXJ. GDXJ is, I can't necessarily call it a bullish Kumo cloud, but I will, simply because we do have positive momentum within that scenario. And we do have uh, locked in bullish momentum, <clears throat> excuse me, on the upside, even though it may be difficult to see that on a chart. On the GDX, however, we have on the weekly, we have a bullish configuration with positive momentum. So just a little bit, slightly different scenario here. And we're in the, the I want to say, we're back to, if you were to do some, um, look at some of the mathematics in the GDX, you would see that we are in the beginning, back to the beginning stages of a bearish correction. What that means is that the way the market's been moving, it's, position, it's repositioned itself on the GDX to look as if we are still in a bear market configuration wherein it could literally lock back in to the downside if that makes any sense to you. All right, moving right along here, uh, GLD, crash alert, but just like uh, the gold futures, it's pretty much the same analysis minus the positive momentum. The GLD, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is, a, is I'm sorry, I take that back. It's the same exact configuration. I'm sorry, I was looking at something else. It's the same exact configuration in every way. Same identical um, situation. The only difference would be that on the GLD, it's slightly more bullish than the gold futures. For those of you that have been with me for a while, you know that I have always stressed that I think that the the non-leveraged uh, base index ETFs, I believe, are priced better than their futures counterparts. All right, so they tend to, for the most part, lead the way and tell a better story than everything else. All right, so let's see what else we got here. JDST and JNUG. I tell you, these two, you love to hate because they're, they're broken, man. All right, a lot of these securities where you have both um, rally and crash alert simultaneously, and it happens often, is a sign that those securities are broken, all right? It's supposed to be an anomaly to have both a rally and a crash alert, all right? That's an anomaly. It's not supposed to even really happen, but less than 1% of the time. So if you're getting it more than that, if it's getting up to 1% or more of the time, that's a sign of something wrong with the price action. There's something broken down in this. And I will tell you that uh, the heavily leveraged ETFs, the 3X ETFs, tend to go this route and look more broken. It's almost to the point where it's not even worth it to trade these most of the time. You would be better off just going with the straight index. You know, but they made it so that it's impossible to do that. You can only go long on the GDX and the GDXJ. All right. 
you will find that it's almost impossible to short the GDX and the GDXJ. You have to go into Dust, Nugget, JDST, and JNUG if you're going to look to uh, to short these. You, so that's how it is. If you're gonna if you want to short GDXJ, you got to go along the, the JDST. You want to short GDX, you got to go along the Dust. That's just how it is. That's how they designed it. Kind of sucks because you're supposed to be able to get in there and short a non-leveraged instrument with no problem. You know what I mean? Um, so that's just something for you to chew on. But these both have rally and crash alerts. So now let me tell you how, to, how this plays out. With these uh, highly leveraged ETFs, where they break down like this and you get these long and short, what normally happens is both scenarios typically will actually play out in the same day. So you may get a little rally in the beginning and then it pulls back. Or it may pull back in the beginning and then correct itself and rally. And close higher on the day. It's a weird thing, I know. Also, it's showing you on JDST and JNUG that both of these are locked in a downtrend. I wanted to show you that. I wanted you to see that. Um, they're both locked in on the downtrend on, the, uh, on our in-play tab. Which is, again, something that's not supposed to be happening. That's supposed to be impossible. You can't have a, a, uh, a long security and an inverse security, both in a bear market at the same time. What's the point of having an inverse ETF if the other side of the coin is supposed to be also, um, you know, moving in the opposite direction. They're supposed to move in the opposite direction of each other. So if GDXJ is in a bear market, all right, then JDST is supposed to be in a bull market. But you're not getting that. You're not having that at all. And technically speaking, without the reverse splits and splits and banana splits and split splits, splitsville splits, just to give you an idea, JDST has fallen from $317.80 a share down to the $14 handle. <laughs> so, yeah, these securities are broken. All right, uh, also look at uh, Nugget. Nugget also has a, uh, a crash alert on it, and it does not have a rally alert. So it's not as broken as your JNUG is. Uh, pre Ricky has a crash on it too, uh, and unfortunately, your Sprott asset classes are not saved from this. All right, your uh, your your gold miner Sprots also have uh, crash alerts on them too. All right, but because they're not leveraged, um, you don't have the um, those restrictions on there. Now, I don't know if you can short the sprots outright like that or not. I have never tried it. So I may try to do that today to see if it can be done. We'll see. All right. Uh, let's see. Your SIL and SILJ, so your silver miners are not, um, not safe from the crash alert today either. Uh, let's see. Your bonds, your long bonds, you know, when I say long, I mean the, the bull, the bullish bonds. Ticker symbol TMF, TYD. They also have crash alerts. All right. Question is, is the run in the bonds over, you you might ask. Well, I would not necessarily look to the to those leverage ETFs for that. Now the the one X ETFs or one point five X ETFs, that's fine. I mean, there you can go. You can look at. You can rely on those more than you can the two and three times ETFs. All right. Um, on the uranium side, uh, we have UEC has a crash alert on it. Uh, so let's see what else we got. Uh, U.S. Steel. And WAT Waters. So we'll have to watch that today. And of course, 
the yen, the ultra short yen, YCS has a crash alert, which means that the yen will possibly move up today, which it should with a weaker dollar. All right, so that's what we have on the on the uh, sell side today. As far as on the rally side, that leaves pretty much everything else. Um, so we'll have to watch and see. Uh, GameStop, one of my favorite, and General Motors, they all have rally alerts. I heard some news the other day on the GameSpot. Um, it was saying that they believed that the company was pretty much doomed because of the new technology that's coming out with Microsoft. Something where, you know, you'll be able to download all the digital copies of the Xbox games going all the way back to the Xbox One and all this stuff. I'm not an Xbox expert. I don't, I don't own one. But I am interested in checking out this Xbox Scorpion that's coming out the uh, sometime this year. Knowing them, it'll probably be around Christmas time, but it's supposed to be, you know, next gen, taking everything to the next level. So they claim that ever since Microsoft has been doing the digital thing that GameSpot's been getting hit. But I don't think GameSpot is going anywhere because there's always going to be a demand for physical copies. There's a lot of game enthusiasts who like physical copies of games. And uh, not all games that have been created have digital copies. Some of them are only hard copies. Like if you go to the PlayStation Store, for example you will see a plethora of games there, but not all of them are down or download. You know what I mean? You won't always find your digital copy of especially of some of the older games. So I think there's still a big demand for uh, for like you know a place like GameSpot. So I don't think it's going anywhere. But it has pulled back. I mean it's in the twenties now. So it's something to look at. Uh, Potash has a rally alert along with Netflix, Twitter. Here's an interesting one. The TBT inverse ETF for the, long, for the 20 year bond. The, uh, this one goes with TLT. Well, there is a rally alert here. So that, in my opinion, is very interesting that we would have that. Um, and I'm going to be watching that one myself. Uh, TLT does not have a rally alert on it. But the makeup of it is a positive swing VIX on your momentum side. So the argument is, is the recent bump up in price going to be a area where money is maybe looked to be taken off the table a bit. Uh, that's why you have the rally alert in the TBT. I'm not so sure, because the futures is is still relatively strong. As long as that, um, as long as we're staying around that 151 to 152 handle, I don't see the rally thing argument playing out in the TBT. I could be wrong, but that's just the way I'm looking at it. So, the next thing that you would want to know is, well, what about oil? What's going on with, with oil? Well, if you look at ticker symbol OIH, because that one closely, more closely follows the futures than anything else. And that's because of the way they address the contango markets and the and all that and roll over I mean it's it, they pretty much strictly trade the futures that's how that it, that whole ETF is made up of so and it's non leveraged all right so the other counterpart that pretty much follows it pretty good too would be um, would be you know the dig dugs uh, so if you look at DIG DIG's uh, technical should match OIH perfectly. So you got 11, 5, 52, 40, and we got 11, 50, 18, 40 on the OIH. All right. So it's close. Excuse me, but slight variation. But for the most part, it's it's still the same argument. So you see, we're in a retracement uptrend, downtrend, locking in on the OIH. Okay. 
and then on the dig again you see a retracement on the downtrend and pretty much trying to continue that going forward but it could lock back in on the downside so between these two you should be able to see uh, a better overall picture on the crude oil scenario you can also look at UCO UCO pretty moves moves pretty good also so that's that's what I would look at for the oil uh, crude oil argument and with crude oil trading right now at 52.97 pulling back a little bit you might get a trick you might trigger on the UCO on the open and then from there it's probably gonna fall back down a little bit same thing for OIH and uh, dig may not let me see uh, no dig may too so just FYI if you're looking for any oil plays that's what I'll be looking at uh, the 3x oils the uh, the O I L U and O I L D I think it is those are not showing up on the sheet just yet because they are too new and have too few data so as we get more data they'll they automatically pop in and populate once they've been trading for a little bit longer so that's just FYI on that alright so remember Bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. Peace on that. Wow.